Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of Arbitration Studios as we continue our journey across the whole darn thing of Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries. I'm JP Arbiter. I'm Zero Arbiter. And we performed a military exercise with Arden Sortek, and we then went around the Capellan March and helped out with some managed democracy. And so we, while we were doing that, we got a, another transmission from the Federated Sons. So let's see what happens here. Um, if you haven't noticed from the main campaign, this was a huge problem. <laughs> well, we uh, we dilly dallied. We weren't getting missions that were high and that were good at boosting our profile. So we had to uh, hit the rewind machine. And also, frankly, I, I, I accidentally deleted some videos, so it was just conducive to doing that. <clears throat> so, Commander, on behalf of First Prince Hans Davy and the Federated Sons, wishes to extend to you an offer for a two-year independent commission with the AFFS. Over the years, our regimental combat teams have suffered significant losses at the hands of the Draconis Combine, which has left... Units veterans suffering from exhaustion and low morale a few years ago sought to inject new blood into the unit, promoting and promising young officers within the Davian Assault Guards who have since been working at replenishing the ranks of the RT's RCT. But with replacement troops being fairly green and the veterans demoralized and drained, High Command's belief is that we need an additional injection of talent to give some stability to the unit they work to rebuild their lost ranks. <clears throat> Should you accept this commission, you'll be put under a two-year exclusive contract under the direct command of Marshal of the Armed Forces of the Federated Sons. You'll still be entitled to your posted MRB rates with full combat bonuses should the need arise. Contact us if these terms are agreeable. And... So... The Federated Sons is gearing up for war. For a big war. That is the only explanation for it, because I I mean, what what why the um why the urgency? So And the Draconis Combine. I forget which one those are. House Karina. Like I said, House Korea, so. Which is odd. So Dragon. Icon. Yep. Anyway, let's accept the uh, contract and see where this takes us. From Marshal Jackson Davian, thank you for answering the, the call, Commander. I'm Marshal Jackson Davian of the Crucius Lancers 2nd Battalion. I think you mean 2nd Regiment, because if you're a Marshal, you should not be commanding just a battalion. <clears throat> you may know us better as the Kestrel Lancers. Colonel Sortek has informed me that you'll be serving out your contract as an independent battle mech detachment under my command. We're glad to have you aboard. We need all the help we can get. Yada, yada, yada. Be honest with you, Commander. Kestrel Lancers have seen better days. My predecessor was supposed to uh, suffered heavy losses. Yada, yada, yada. Aggressively recruiting to fix this, but I need experienced soldiers to build up a reliable core that I can count on to get the job done. After seeing your performances up close during Galahad, I am confident that your unit is exactly what we need. Although you have been contracted as a mercenary, officially you are added to the roster as a special operations battle mech company under the Kestrel Lancers. We want to preserve the appearance of strength to our enemies while rebuilding is underway. Okay, so... <laughs> and they're chartering a command circuit to get us here. Oh. Oh. Oh no. I know what's happening. Husband, in honor of our marriage, I give you a regiment of battle mechs and the means to support them in perpetuity. Actually, she gave I us a division. You. In honor of our marriage, I give you a vast prize. <laughs> the Capellan Confederation. I whispered that to your mom when we got married. Lancers, we have been called to war. So, Operation Rat, it's, it's not... 
it's not just boosting the, the Crucius Lancers for the Federated Sons. We're engaging Victor in the event that started the ball rolling on arguably the entire Battletech franchise, resulting in the state of the Inner Sphere as it exists today in 3152. A vast network of men very, very, if you want to be very strictly, like, no nuance point of view on this, everything that has happened from this point on is all Han Stadion's fault. <laughs> the Han is a no other. A fully self sufficient, he has, um, succession wars. The backdrop of this, since you haven't read the Warrior Trilogy yet, is that the Federated Sons and the Lyran Commonwealth have agreed to an alliance that will fundamentally... Yep. And this alliance will fundamentally unite the two nations into one, creating the Federated Commonwealth. That, that is also the main thing from for, for the cartoon. Yep. Now, the Federated Commonwealth is, is... You can't just slap a new name and make a new flag and make a nation, particularly in an era of kings and queens. And so, Hans Davian will, to seal this alliance, marry the daughter of the Archon of the Lyran Commonwealth, <laughs> Melissa Steiner, which is a little weird because Hans Davian is my age, and at the time the marriage was proposed, Melissa Steiner was like 16, so only a year and change older than you were. You are now. Okay. Um, so it's a little creepy, but Melissa had the right to say no, and she was an adult when she married Hans. So, the idea is to create, is that, Ooh, cr is, style. going on too. is combining, uh, two royal families into one, and thus create, so that way there's no continuity snafus with uh who gets who gets what thrown when collect one centurion mech kill three javelin mechs kill ten to i think we'll get all those done with this all right <clears throat> oh my so what would be on what would be on market probably? i'm not going to trade it and buying it oh wow We'll be able to salvage one. I'm more interested in this archer. Whew. Whew. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's gonna be too handy. Um anyway. So there so there's a fundamental geography problem though when it comes to uniting the Federated Sons and the Laren Commonwealth. In that the only border that those two nations share is Terra itself. Oh, Terra. And so this war, Operation Rat, is and what would later be called the Fourth Succession War, really is a plan to invade the Capellan Confederation predominantly. And little bits of the Draconis Combine and the Free Worlds League too, but mostly the Capellan Confederation, to create a corridor of territory to eliminate the lack of a border between the two nations. That's the idea. So. Oh, wait. I know what we need. We're going to bomb the shit out of this place. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, let's. Blow up. All Lots right. Lots of stuff. I think uh, we've got our old reliable friend here, Mr. Black Knight. Yep. Um. Gafrak, probably? Mm hmm. I'm thinking this Gauze Rifleman. 
Oh. We okay. will have... A... Oh, wait, that's not the Gauze Rifleman. That's the, uh... Um, but... Wow. Oh! Well... That, that, that needs I, I guess, I, God. I guess I stashed, uh... I guess I stashed the, uh... Gosh, uh, instead, we're gonna put it, put the hunchback on you, and let's see here, thirty five, and we've got. Four. Oh, that that needs to be good. Fifty, ho ho, hang tight. We'll get, we will get that. Uh, we will get that warhammer right with God. Okay, so <laughs> it's all right. So we're just gonna go to a random act, go to paint, apply all. There we go. I think that's a good lance. That's going to cover all of our bases. Yep. So, let's get it on. Yep, let's. Whoop. This how it's me. Ah, we suffered the glitch. The glitch, the glitch, the glorious glitch. Okay. Well, we're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification. And then... Load. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we gotta. Yep, they stay the same. <laughs> I'm like my. Probably, probably like sea bills, probably because. Mm. We're fine in terms of sea bills, so. We've run a lot skinnier than 17 million sea bills. Yeah. So, we're, we're we're fine, and we uh. And we've got two successor states bankrolling us right now, so I, I'm not gonna I'm not worried. Hundred percent, let's get it on. Let's rock and roll. Boop 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 boop. And it starts with your God damn it. And it starts with your favorite transition to boot. Yep. It's the turntable that the that the mechs stand on, isn't it? Yes, cause. Yeah, cause though I like those turntables. Nope. Oh. How would we get? Like, how would like the. Mech pods get in the max always. How would the mech pods get in the max? Like, like the people that who, like, like the mech pilots would get in. Um, you saw the gantries. Oh yeah, gantries. Uh, they lead right up to the cockpit, so you can just get, you can just walk right up and, and hop in. Um, in the absence of those, like if we were in the field or something. Yeah. Um. A scissor lift, like what you see when uh, the the janitor at your, at your school has to change light bulbs in the gym, will do the job. And all battle mechs, all battle mechs are equipped with handholds, retractable ladders, uh, and <laughs> and even welded on ladders. So that way you can climb the mech in the field with as little difficulty as possible. Um, in Ace Darwin in the Battle of the Beer Fridge, it's described that uh, there was a chain ladder that was retractable, real, that could be reeled up, and it was stored in a bin underneath the head module's chin. And yes, I just referenced my own official Battletech fiction. Available in Shrapnel number 8, by the way, for those who are curious. 
Um, I am not above self-promotion. Yeah. Never be above self-promotion, Victor. You have wrote a lot. Uh, about six short stories so far, and there will be more. Ah, so. Bup, 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 bup. Pulse lasers! Ha <laughs> ha. And this thing, yes, sir, is our old faithful freaking headshots. Yep. Oh, not just headshots. The black, this black knight has served us very well. Um, so, true story, the black knight was actually the signature mech for a uh, expansion for Mech Warrior 4 called, creatively enough, the Black Knight Edition. Okay. <laughs> that Black Knight looked a lot different, though. Um, it looked more like the um, the model from uh, the, uh, remember, the 3145 technical readout? Oh, yeah, right. Yes. So. Okay. Let's, do, do. let's destroy batteries. Indeed. Now, what... This is one of those things that, like, I like to... You know, they're never explicitly mentioned in, like, older Battletech fiction in particular, but I always like to Sorry. imagine that they were always there. Um, just because, frankly, why wouldn't you have big installations with ridiculous sized guns throwing things up. No, 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 <laughs> no. Damage. Oh, we're fine. Ba, 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 ba. Dead. That is a lot of batteries for one place. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's, uh, at least six on this particular, uh, outpost. And there and are, if... and there's one other neighboring outpost that probably has enough, has another half dozen. Um, and the, and these are not autocannon tens if you catch my drift. Targeting info updated. 20s, mean. No, no, they're not even autocannon 20s. These suckers are capital grade cannons the kind of cannons that you would find on warships um because the technology oh. well uh, cannons yeah because ships i could take power ships are you done yeah as i was saying the technology to make capital grade weapons was one of those things that was never really lost uh, during the Succession Wars. Not the weaponry, and not even the ships themselves. You know what the hardest part was? It was actually the engines. The thrusters that would allow the ship to move from... Um, to side to side, basically? Uh, well, move through space move from the jump point to wherever it was needed in theater. Um. Anyway. That, uh. That took a lot out of me. So. I'm going to say we bomb the crap out of the next site. Yes, let's. Let's blow it up. In fact. That one right there. Oh, one one. This is Sierra two one. Roger that. Commencing bomb run now. Sierra two one out. Have fun, kids. <laughs> That's it. Are you? I am very disappointed in you. I want you guys to know that. Oh, oh, and guys, take care of that. I mean, Alpha one one, Sierra two one, reporting in. We are standing by, ready to deliver the payload. Over. 
Cool. We'll bomb them. K kill that. <laughs> Just fry them. Can someone explain to me how on an airless moon that there are helicopters working? Oh, crap. Oh, someone was playing in our backfield and I don't appreciate it. Two. All right. Really? I'm trying to be, like, nice and calm and collected and cool here, but... And you guys mess it up. And you didn't even hit them! Okay. Oh, I hit them. It was just a really crap run. Eight? On this one? It's the this planet is described as a fortress, bud. That is a lot of defense. Oh hey, Sturian. Yeah. So we would be able to to solve that one if it stays alive. Oh, if we can. So <laughs> You know, the, our, our contract doesn't dictate that the Centurion has to be intact. Katine? Mean? Yeah. Well, it's still a contract. Oh, yeah. Who just did that? Someone trying to embarrass me on live TV? Look. I'm committing a war crime here, okay? Okay, th that was definitely our Centurion. <laughs> no, because it shot the back. <laughs> All right. Four left. All right, kids, have fun. We're we're ripping things up. Oof. Oh, I got a little hot there. A little bit overheated. A little enthusiastic. A, a little bit overheated. All right. And... Jesse Perosa. I don't recognize that name. I think that's an original character. Or if it, or if it's not an original character, then it, uh, then it only ever existed as a name on a sheet of paper. Oh, piss off! And it, and it. Again, how are helicopters even working on this moon? Yeah, they should work on Terra. Well, they should work on a planet with an atmosphere, but this is a moon with minimal atmosphere, if any. Oh, no. <laughs> no. that was so close to being a perfect shot. I for... know. I'm, I'm moderately ashamed of myself. Yeah, because <laughs> if you would have crushed it with the feet, that would have been a perfect. Hold on, there's loot to be had. I'm gonna commit a war crime to get it. Yay, munitions. Missiles and ballistics. Hostiles spotted engaging. Can you take care of that, please? Oh! Oh, okay. It's not like anymore. All right. Oh, 
I, I just like a pillow on, on, under my legs. Let's see here. No centurion to be salvaged, unfortunately. But we've got some very valuable salvage in the form of... Lasers. Some lasers, a good model of LRM-10. And... I uh, yeah, will just flood the rest of the zone with heat sinks. All right. So. That's part one down. Uh, yep. Let's take a look on part two. 15 days. So we got a nice. I'm not selling my only Centurion to you guys. Because, oh, wait, I have a Centurion, <laughs> a spare Centurion. So, yeah, we'll just sell that one. Cool. All right. Now, we've got some mechs to repair. So... Efforts uh, on Doria, the entirety of the Crucius Lancers were able to make Planetfall with minimal casualties. Since making Planetfall, we've learned that the Capellan Confederation Strategic Military Director Pavel Ridzik is presently on Tikhonov. Can't get ahead of ourselves. Crucius Lancer objective is to take a major population centers and most importantly, secure our spaceports. Six and eight will be assigned to take Tychograd. Kustral Lancers have been aside in the mining town of Gija. Okay. The Ariana Grenadiers. Okay. Throw out their trying to name. Hmm? <laughs> I took her Grenadiers. So. Anywho. Well. Continue. Heavy losses, companies worth the survivor objectives. So. No, no airstrikes. No airstrikes. Money? A little bit of money, a little bit of uh, damage control coverage. So. Let's see here. Let's use our resources to take advantage of things imme immediately. So, I think that'll do her. And that is also perfect amount, too. And we are ready to rock and roll. Yes, I know that. I mean, 15 days are the max that we took would have been ready by then, but you know. So, if I remember right, Crucis Lancers regiments have been assigned to take cities adjacent to regional spaceports to secure our foothold within the Okay. While the sixth and what we have here makes an advance on the capital city of Tikagrad. We have been assigned to take and hold the mining city of Gizhiga and its small spaceport high in the Kazan Mountain. Gizhiga. Okay. Not Gizhiga, but casualties against the Ariana Grenadiers defending the region, pushing them back into the city itself. Their remaining Op 4 and some planetary militia have held themselves up in the city and have refused to surrender to our forces. So we've been ordered Well, that's a mistake. Oh, hey, Warhammer. I mean, so when... So here, here's something special about what... About uh, this war that we are fighting on. Or fighting in. Um... The... Previous warfighting 
status quo for the inner sphere for a long time was that deploying a company of 12 battle mechs represented a significant uh, amount of resources and strategic risk. Oh, hey, free battle mech, too. <laughs> no, free one. Free one? A free mech. What free mech? A Warhammer. We destroyed it. It's not free. It's not ours. It was loot. It had it dropped loot, but I'm not gonna be able to salvage it. No. no. So. Anyway. Um, as I was saying, uh, deploying a single company of 12 battle mechs into to try and capture one planet was that was huge and just the logistic require logistical requirements we talked about that previously of moving massed battle mech armies was just lost throughout the succession wars well hans davian simply asked why is it such a big ask you nationalize your jump ship fleets and you, you know, when you're when you want to get something done, you just do it. Um, yeah. And he proved it with the Galahad exercises and with um, an earlier campaign to the planet Halstead Station, and then another planet called Galator. Um. And then it was like, okay, moving regiment, a single regiment is not a huge ask, I guess. But clearly you couldn't like move brigade level assets all at once, could you? And the four succession war proved that you could. The, um, cause the key thing that what really prevented it in the eyes of everyone was that you needed Comstar and their faster than light communications to facilitate the um okay, we'll found. nope that's panther the only people have wolfhounds right now are the federated commonwealth nations and the calhounds okay so i think wolf dragoons had one um so the question is, how did Hans Davian succeed at a what really amounted to the equivalent of an entire Star League army group moving all at once across running roughshod over an entire nation while being able to maintain control? And you know what the answer to that question was? Yeah. He didn't. He didn't worry about maintaining control of his armies. He get he planned extensively with experts. The various the various commanders that and generals that he had assigned, they had their mission, but they also but Hans Davian also trusted them and gave them the authority to act as they needed to to fulfill that mission or if it absolutely needed to happen to scrub it without fear of being ostracized or dishonored if they returned having failed because you know what one of the things that one of the things about being a military leader one of the things about being a leader in general victor is that failures can happen failure is always an option that fearing sock was crazy because he landed on metal stairs. Oh. Skadoosh. Oh. Goink. So, 
you know, that it, it, I mean, you couldn't, the Federated Commonwealth couldn't launch to continue the lecture. Um, they couldn't launch a campaign like the Operation Rat every year for for ad infinitum until they took over the entire inner until the Federated Suns took over the entire inner sphere. That would be impossible because you know eventually you're going to run your army dry. You're going to exhaust it. But by giving by by letting loose the the leash a little bit and by engaging in very extensive planning he was able to overcome a lot of the limitations that that basically made the succession wars grind down into nothing more than petty raids with no significant changes on the map of the inner sphere Yep, and it was a lesson that the rest of the inner sphere learned pretty well. So. <laughs> neutralized. I guess that's a word for it. <laughs> Eliminated. I think it's fair to say that we kicked their ass. Yes. <laughs> yep, indeed. Do, 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 do. I think we got one more mission in us for this recording, don't you? Yep. Alrighty. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to need a Jenner. Ooh. Mid-tier PPC. I'll take that. Because I don't think we're going to see anything else interesting. Nope. Next mission. Receive word that Pavel Reddick has abandoned Tikhanov. The 6th, 7th, and 8th Lancers attempted to capture him, but bad weather prevented the airspace wings from being able to pursue Reddick's dropship, and he has fled the system across Tikhanov. Blah, blah, blah. Yakety schmackety. Blah, blah, blah. Thanks to the effort of 7th. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's kick some ass. Probably no airstrikes. Nope, no airstrikes. Instead, we have to take a battle mech factory. And part of this means we get to bring out an old friend. Oh. Hello. Hello, the old friend of pal. <laughs> We are definitely going to need that, uh, Print that AC-20 there. There's just, I think of like a FNAF Phantom, but it's called Pal Percy. That, a Tamagotchi. <clears throat> at the end, tries to kill you. Well, he says prepare our biggest, toughest mechs. Let's see what our biggest, toughest mechs can do. Whip our father's victor. <laughs> the capital of Tigograd has surrendered. Strategic director... Whoop. Let's make sure. AC-20, medium lasers, SRM-4. Cool. Ridzik has fled the system, and the primary earthworks manufacturing facility... And with... With... Our control. With the... Uh, Mech of my favorite one. <laughs> well, I thought you'd appreciate that. Yeah, especially because I hope... I, I, I just figured that, hey, Autocannon 20 is going to come in handy. And... <clears throat> and so will the jump jets, I think. It's, it's like, I can fly! I believe I can fly. And... I believe I can touch the sky. Autocannon 20? Plus, 
Jump jets? Minions. Doom. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's egg. Someone wants to play. Oh. Hey. Boo. We, we haven't got our, our good funny yet. We don't need to right now. All right, these are scorpion tanks. They're not exactly, um... Strong. <clears throat> well, they're not tough enough to warrant an autocannon 20 shot. Okay, they're going to swing wide around, so should I. Alright. That, that, that is also a YouTube journal on the platform that who uh, t tell up like victims in movies. <laughs> Marshal Davian, we have made contact with the Yao defenders screening the base. We're engaging now. Awesome. We've made it to the outer perimeter. Go get him, Skippy. Of static oh, those, that's fun. Skippy? Marking it on the HUD yeah. Now. If there is anyone with jump capabilities, we may be able to silence those turrets all at once. Anyone with jump capability. Do we know anyone with jump capabilities? I don't think we do. I think we're just going to have to grind this out. Um, uh, Victor has one. Victor has jump capability. Are you sure? Yeah, that's for A. <laughs> no, just, just per se. I know. New target, Orion. Next spotted. Orion, no. Oh, 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 Orion. The auto parts. That was a bad pun. <laughs> that is not your slogan, bitch. You're right uh -oh. on the arm, too. <laughs> I remember the time that we potted one in. And All right. we got jumped. No, that. That until we got jumped and. died. That was probably like one funny one. Hi, guys. I'm just gonna roll right on up to you, okay? I'm in your base, killing your dudes. Oh! <laughs> oh! And crashing right through a building that was clearly not built to support the weight of Battle Max. That makes them. That needs supports. Emotional supports. <laughs> emotional supports for emotional damage. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Punched it. We got we got a bunch of mechs that we gotta deal with here, kids. Come on. Oh hey. Oh, that was a headshot. Okay. I'm uh I I am I hope he took up brain damage. <laughs> I, I don't think there's enough brain left to consider damaged. <laughs> So, they put an urban mech inside just to protect it. Actually, it's not a bad thing. A bad plan. <laughs> um, yeah, that that. Can someone please take care of that fire starter on my butt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That would not be bad. Does does have like a big defense system? Of urban max. Ah, oh, static defenses are are a monument to man's stupidity, particularly in the age of battle max, Victor. Yep. Um. Oh. The uh. Yeah, you know, if you want to. Oh, holy caprax. Yep. If you want to defend a planet, it is best to station mo uh semi-mobile repair centers and ammunition dumps. And to have your defenders working long-range patrols and hit-and-run attacks uh, on anyone who's daring to invade your home planet. Uh, fixed and static defenses, I mean, first off, oh. um, 
the thing about fixed and pulp paper armor that survived the AC 20 shot it didn't survive the follow-up missiles yep so anyway the oh, ooh, one the armor arms are with oh did I, I shut the fuck up yeah because I was trying to make a point oh yeah <laughs> Anyway, um, the thing about fixed defenses is that you can, that, that you know where they are, they're in one place, especially if you can master a skill like reading a map. So you can just go around them. Okay. Um, there was a uh, line of defenses in France in the 1930s. And when Germany invaded France, because the guy who was at the head of Germany was a really bad dude at the time, um, he went around this line of fixed defenses by invading France's neighbor Belgium first. And the, 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 the defenses weren't designed to turn and point at Belgium. Okay. So that was, uh, that was, um, that was a mistake. You also see that fixed defenses are kind of a monument to massive errors because uh, in the Battletech universe, because in the novel Hour of the Wolf, uh, Clan Wolf just said, oh, those fixed defenses are cute. We're just going to completely ignore them and conquer all the territory that they're not protecting. Wait, I think I must joke too. To the audiobook version of that, actually. Uh, there isn't an audiobook of Hour of the Wolf yet. That we're failing I, on. I get it. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm working on it. 74% ain't bad. <laughs> oh, this is going to get so much worse. Probably would, because... <clears throat> anyway, we're a little dinged up. <laughs> Ding dong. Ding dong. Oh, Christ. Oh. That Phoenix lock is stuck in, in a corner. Okay, arm armor like the I'm aware of how much our our main gun arm is not feeling good right now. <laughs> yeah, that smells I, like I can read the armor readout. It's being like however it looks like we have a uh, saving grace here. Make use of them while you can, commander. No telling what we will face deeper into this facility. Ugh. Uh, it's not so much the ammo, although I'm we're we were down halfway on the auto cannon twenty. But uh. the arm, the yep. that's better. Fully re re uh, stocked, and our armor was patched up. Now so, I could probably go to another one, but that frankly is um. That would just take time that we don't have right now, because there, there, there are going to be more mechs coming up that are going to try and blow up our uh, our shiny new factory here. Gotcha. I have, I have, I have defeated defeated a locust once in like a tabletop. They're hard to hit. No, but like, with, but with like a gauze cannon. Well, they're not that hard to hit. 
<laughs> Don't face one with, with a ghost cannon. Locusts are... They are a challenge um, to the unprepared. And they can be valuable in the hands of a very skilled pilot. Yes, because... It could be good for speed. Mm-hmm. Make... <laughs> Faster you run, the more hexes you move. The more hexes you move uh, out of, the harder it is for you to hit. Um. And if if you had courses, that would be good. I was uh, playing once with uh, my with uh, my buddy, your uncle Chris, and uh, there was a locust that took on a 100 ton archangel, and like. It wasn't even a matter of bad rolls. I, he couldn't get into a position where he could roll. Oh. That's that shot. Oof. That, that was probably like a concussion. I think, the, <laughs> I think that was more than a concussion. I think it got turned into a meat puzzle. Working on it. Cut me some slack, please. Or like a mech taco. I mean, yes. Yes, Hans Davian is nothing more than a selfish warmonger. You're right. Yeah. He's a selfish warmonger who's paying me. Yes! Oh, that's cute. Look. A mech taco. <coughs> the calf wreck does, does look like the... Like the torso area does look... For like a calf wreck, looks like a taco. I don't see it. But if that's what it looks like to you, I mean, what am I going to do? Say no, you're wrong? Probably not. Oh, I, I'm just going to say I don't see it, so. Mission accomplished. Taken off is ours. <sighs> where, where the Cafrax are mass produced. Mm-hmm. They're going to be a valuable asset for the Federated Commonwealth to, uh... Use for... To use. I wish I could have done more to keep that factory intact, but, you know, 47. it's not completely destroyed, so, good enough. Hey, free shock. Ah, uh, I wanted that grasshopper, but, yeah. But I guess we have one already. Mm -hmm. Trebuchet is too intact. Yeah. Take the Phoenix Saw because we've scavenged some EW equipment from elsewhere. And carry on. Oh, and we get a cataphract. I'll take that. Um, just like we could actually look at that too. So we'll fix those guys up. The CTF 1X cataphract. Built by the built by Earthworks Corporation on Tikhonov. Uh, courtesy the Capellan Confederation, who needed a new battle mech design because their ability to manufacture Star League classics like the Warhammer, Archer, and Marauder had been compromised by 300 years of succession wars. And the Cataphract is, bu is built to carry a PPC, an autocannon 10, and four medium lasers. Two of them mounted traditionally in the rear facing so that it could engage in what essentially amounted to multi-threat warfare in the middle of a knife fight. Um, it's very tough, and it was built largely using recycled components. You can see that the legs and the, um, and the gun arm resemble a Marauder's very closely. The free arm with the hand actuator actually came from Shadowhawk moldings. Okay. So it will, when it first came onto the scene, it was described as a Franken mech for being so 
off-putting in its appearance. Okay, also got fried because if we take the legs off and like the arms, that like legs without arms from like the weapon arms, mm -hmm. that looks like a taco from like. Without, like, the calf rack, without the legs and, like, the weapons. Aren't. So you're talking about the torso. Yeah. Uh, because the curve. Uh, maybe. Maybe. So you're going to call it a taco mac from here on in, aren't you? No. I just... No. <laughs> anyway. Well, that is all that I think I have in us today. So we are going to take a quick break and... When we come back in our next time, we will be continuing the fourth succession war in the legend of the Kest Kestrel Lancers. Until then, See we'll ya. be seeing you.